September 28, 2022. A day that should have been full of adventure and excitement turned into a tragic disaster for two rock climbers on Tokwitz Rock in the San Jacinto Mountains. Chelsea Walsh and Gavin Escobar faced thunderstorms and extreme weather conditions after which fate struck. Tokwitz Rock is a granite rock formation located in the San Jacinto Mountain Range in Southern California, USA. With an elevation of 2,696 meters, it is known as a difficult climb because of its steep wall, lack of handholds, and steep slope. There are several routes and climbs on this rock, with each of them having a different level of difficulty. All the routes that Chelsea and Gavin took have difficulty ranging from 5.8 to 5.10, making them intermediate to difficult climbs. The weather conditions at Takwitz Rock are unpredictable and can be very changeable, from sunny and clear weather to thunderstorms and extreme conditions. This can make the climb even more challenging, especially if the weather changes while a climber is on the rock face. The rock becomes slippery and wet. Climbers should always be prepared for the possibility of sudden weather changes. Unfortunately, Chelsea and Gavin faced extreme weather conditions during their climb. On 28 September 2022, Chelsea and Gavin went on a mountaineering expedition as usual. They were good friends and were often found scaling mountains and hills in their free time. Chelsea was an experienced rock climber and filmmaker. She worked for the nonprofit Road Trip Nation and recently made the documentary Light, which explores the stories of climbers who have overcome their eating disorders. Gavin was a former National Football League player who played for the Dallas Cowboys, Kansas City Chiefs, Baltimore Ravens, Cleveland Browns, and Miami Dolphins. He retired in 2018 with 30 catches and eight touchdowns. After retirement, he worked as a firefighter in Long Beach, California. At 8 to 8.30 a.m., while Chelsea and Gavin made their way to the base of the rock, they passed the group of four climbers just below Lunch Rock. They said that they were going to climb Dave's Deviation, a three-pitch 5.9 first climbed by Tom Frost and Royal Robbins in 1960. The weather seemed good. Only a few white clouds were visible. They were determined to make a successful ascent. The climbers saw Gavin and Chelsea around 10.30 a.m., beginning on the nearby Super Pooper. They were climbing on Pine Tree Ledge with a pipe just above the ledge. They had also seen them start on the second slope of Dave's Deviation. This was the last time they saw Gavin and Chelsea. At the time, the weather was still good. Between 11.42 a.m. and 11.43 a.m., all teams took photos showing dark clouds with falling raindrops in the distance. Shortly after that, it began to rain lightly. The team on the Super Pooper started discussing alternative options. At 12.03 p.m., the first rope team of two climbers pulled away from the left ski track and took shelter under a rock near the top of the trough. As they took shelter, they heard the sounds of another climbing group nearby, talking and laughing. Suddenly, the weather turned. Severe thunderstorms with heavy rain and hail were on the way. The climbers were amazed at how quickly the weather turned. The rain poured down on the rock faces, and all the climbing equipment was soaked. The second rope team consisting of four people who had completed the left ski track quickly joined the first two and decided to take shelter. Between 12.03 p.m. and 12.15 p.m., the climbers on Super Pooper began bailing. Suddenly, they heard a loud noise to their right as they turned around. They saw climbers and rock tumbling down. The climbers seeking shelter at the top of the trough heard the fall to their left. No one heard the rock fall before it dropped suddenly. While it was still thundering, the rain had abated and the hailstorm had now stopped. However, the wind was still light at that time. According to the Riverside Mountain Rescue Unit report, two groups witnessed the accident. One group of two people left Super Pooper and another group of four people had completed left ski track and they were all sheltering near the top of the trough. At 12.17 p.m., the climbers on Super Pooper were the first to call 911. The Riverside County Fire Department reported that multiple fire engines and a Sheriff's Star 9 helicopter crew conducted a search and rescue mission. The rescue team hiked a challenging path and arrived at the location where the casualties were seen at 1.20 p.m. Gavin and Chelsea were found at the base of the gully below the trough at the tree line on Tokwitz Rock. On arrival at the scene, Escobar and Walsh were pronounced deceased. After this gruesome discovery, the case was handed over to the sheriff's deputies. Upon further examination at the time of the accident, 
Both climbers were wearing the necessary safety equipment, including helmets, harnesses, and climbing shoes. They both had a similar number of cams and quick draws attached to their harnesses. Gavin carried a partial set of nuts, while Chelsea had crack gloves. Chelsea had her personal anchor system attached to her harness with a locked screw gate at one end, and an unlocked screw gate attached to an ATC, and an unlocked screw gate attached to a hollow block. On the other hand, Gavin had tied a loop of gear to his harness using an unlocked carabiner and a device called a belay loop. Unfortunately, there was some wear and tear on the rope near the ATC and a few feet below it, but there were no breaks. The end of the rope had a knot called a figure eight tied into it. One was loose and one was tight. The scene was a heartbreaking sight. Climbing equipment was scattered around the trough. The quick draw was the item found highest on the mountain. The lowest item found was Chelsea's helmet with the fallen rock near the base of the trough. Two climbers witnessed the fall and both stated that they saw a large rock fall. A rock was identified with recent damage below the trough that was approximately three and a half by three by one and a half feet in size. A rock was identified with recent damage. In addition, there were damaged rock plates found on the mountain on which the boulder had probably fallen. Based on the physical evidence and witness statements, it is believed that Chelsea and Gavin climbed Dave's deviation and proceeded to Upper Royal's Arch via Galwis Gallop or Piton Pooper. When the storm worsened, the group arrived at a pine tree near the first slope of Upper Royal's Arch and considering the weather, chose to descend instead of ascending further. Upon reaching the pine tree, the girth had become wet, making it harder to assess its quality without carefully examining the knot and checking its original shade. Probably they attached themselves to the girth with their personal anchoring systems. Since the area under the pine tree is sloping and it is difficult for them to stand there, they probably weighted down their girth. After that, they tied stop knots into their rope, fastened it through the two wire gates that were in opposition to each other, and let the ends dangle. Gavin went first and descended a few feet before the rope snapped. Both climbers fell because it was a single strand with no redundancy. Since there is no evidence that the rockfall struck the tree or surrounding rocks, and the straps could not have been broken by a rock, it is assumed that the falling rock must have been dislodged at some point during the victim's descent. Shortly after the news of this accident became public, the condolences flooded in. Walsh was a documentary filmmaker and was praised in the film industry for her kindness and humanitarian work. Escobar was known for his background in the National Football League and as a firefighter, the Cowboys, Escobar's former teammates, and San Diego State all posted memorials for Escobar on social media. Fellow pro bowler and teammate Des Bryant also posted a tribute on social media. Gavin Escobar and Chelsea Walsh will live on in the memories and thoughts of those whose lives they touched and will always be fondly remembered. If you have followed this story to this point, I would like to say a big thank you. If you like this kind of story, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment below. For more of this type of content, please click on the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you will be notified when another video is posted. Until next time, be cautious and don't ever lose your sense of wonder.